Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic show. It is about uh, it is Thursday morning at about nine fifty four. Another cold November morning. Last night was really cold. We've had some cold nights. I mean, of course, it's like just about winter, but it was about. I uh, came home last night from band practice, and it was about uh, I don't know quarter to eleven or ten ten forty or something like that. And it was in the teens. It was about like 12 degrees, 11, 12, 12, 12 or 13 degrees out when I got home. Pretty cold. So not a big fan of the cold weather, but it is what it is. It is, uh, you know, life in New England. So there's, you know, there's, it's always a funny balance sometimes here uh, living in mid coast or in, because we live in such a seasonal place. On the one hand, it's like, there's still a lot of things going on and there's a lot of activities and there's there's plenty of things to do. You know, there's some work to be had. Uh, but, you know, it's a seasonal place. So, like, when you look at, you know, May through August, uh, you know, it's a very different place, totally different place population-wise and, and uh, you know, uh, activity-wise. But, you know, and obviously, summertime, there seems to be always like a thing of where that's where people in the service industry that's where they make all the, all of their money year round it's tough but you know that's that's the kind of the hot time of the year so you know there tends to be you know uh, if you're if you're pretty busy with doing those kinds of things you you know you tend to have obviously uh, a lot less downtime so the the downtime that comes up for this season is usually good in a lot of ways because you have, you know, you can do projects, you can like, you can spend a lot of time writing music. Um, for me, it's like, if I'm in a good spot, I will, I will write, you know, throughout the year. I mean, it's when it when it hits hard you usually try to take advantage of it but when you get some inspiration but a lot of the times you try to you know you can't force it and then there's long gaps of where there isn't anything like that happening but there's plenty of things to do and work and work on and and practice there's like an endless amount of things to always do uh, as far as that stuff goes especially when it comes to mainly when I'm talking about writing music it's it's for uh, my band Quantum and and it comes and goes but I have like you know, I usually always have some things in the back burner that I'm working on. And one of the cool things, at least about the winter time, and, you know, is the the time to record. I, you know, usually for like bigger projects, that's usually when that seems to happen. And I've recorded, last year I recorded three albums, three, three full length albums, and one have one which uh, did come out. So, you know, there's more tar more time for those kinds of things and i might be doing uh, a, re a big recording project uh, next month so we'll see how things go but so you know it's a i i do like the snow but i'm not a fan of the cold so you know it is i i do actually like the snow i like that that that, that kind of climate that warm feeling that it gives you but anyway so i uh quick plug tomorrow today's thursday and tomorrow night uh, Quantum will be playing at uh, Hay Sailor in Searsport, Maine. Super cool place, delicious food. It's a, uh, a bona fide music venue. It's a beautiful space that they the, these these the owners of Hay Sailor have created. It's it's a pretty amazing spot. It's it's like a legitimate music space. I think it's the best place really around here. Um, you know, outside of maybe having to go to like a more city oriented environment like portland or something but this is like a legitimate space you know most of the time you know for musicians here in mid coast you know there's gigs to be had quite a few gigs to be had especially like i said summertime but a lot of the times you have to like show up you know you show up and you've got to supply your own sound system uh, a lot of times you have to like clear out even yourself you have to clear out a space in in a venue you know, moving tables and chairs and all those kinds of things. But basically, you gotta, you gotta run the whole ship yourself. So, and there are places, you know, in the area that, that are more um, set up 
for music uh, that have better acoustics and it's a better just an overall more of a of an environment that's conducive to have live music and I you know again one of my favorite things to do is to go out and see music all the time so I I see that from from a you know the from the perspective of being a fan I, I kind of see and get a gist of how all that stuff works on the outside but then also with me being a musician you know I see from the other's perspective and you know most of the time you have to do those things but there are places and events of where it does feel like a concert it isn't really you know uh it's it, you feel like what you're you're involved with is a, a more of a featured act you know it's that 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 could be the attraction or that is the attraction so that's always really nice um you know and but i think with hey sailor they have this the restaurant and they also have a, a, another location that is actually attached to the same building hey sailor which is the restaurant and then the starboard lounge which is the actual venue that place is a legitimate like venue because they have a sound system in there it's a beautiful stage beautiful lighting uh it's it's a legitimate event um gathering uh, space so pretty cool so we'll be playing there tomorrow tomorrow night at seven o'clock with quantum it's going to be our first show there so if you're around in the area it's a free show come on by check out delicious food it's a beautiful space space so so excited about uh, our first time there. So we'll see how things go. And so today's show is on uh, a movie I have talked about before. I There are certain movies uh, on this channel that I've talked about where I've done maybe one or two shows about them. It's the You know, because sometimes, you know, uh, a certain movie can mean, a, you know, mean something very different for you, for you, uh, depending on your experience of how you first saw the movie or where you saw it or where you, just where you were uh, mentally, all those things. There's all these variables. And then, like I've said too, sometimes you have that reaction from a movie when you, uh, you, you first see it and you're like, okay, there were some good things about it. There were, you know, uh, also some things I felt like I had issues with. And then, you know, it maybe some time goes by and then maybe even years go by and you end up seeing it again and suddenly it just clicks you know and and you're like wow and that can be due to your you know your preconceived ideas of what the film is going to be like you know your state of mind all those things um the biggest for me uh where that is the case is the texas chainsaw massacre the remake uh, that came out in 2003 i just did a big show yesterday where i talked about uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake in 2003, and then 2006, the uh, prequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. That's a perfect example. The original is my one of my all-time favorite movies, uh, hands down. I've always had a real... I really love the second one that was also directed by Toby Hooper, but I have always had a real pretty negative reaction towards everything else after that i've never really been in love with the franchise itself you know i the one franchise i say i love throughout and i don't have a problem or an issue i love each movie certain movies obviously i love more than others is the friday 13th franchise that's my all-time favorite franchise uh and the halloween franchise too i think there are some you know i think that's a little bit more consistent i think there are some really uh great films in that franchise but there are also there are there are also movies that I feel are kind of in the gutter. So not thoroughly, you know, at least in my in my book, they're not thoroughly, um, uh, you know, all good or concise that way. As far as the franchise goes, the uh, other franchises that I really actually like and that I really really love. Are, I re, I'm a huge fan of the Purge franchise. I want to do a show on all of those movies. I only own the first one, which is really a shame. I think those that that franchise is just incredible. I actually think that's almost exceptional because I feel like each movie in the Purge franchise actually gets better. Uh, big fan of that franchise, and that's eventually something I want to talk about. Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, for, for the most part, uh, I love that franchise. I have not talked about any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but I do want to. Um, 
at some point. Uh, it's just a case of eventually getting to it. Uh, but big fan of those films. I don't really have an issue with any of those films. And it's been a while since I've seen a few of those movies. A, a long, long time. So it'd be cool to revisit them. You know, so franchises are, you know, pretty consistent for the most part. Well, it's pretty mixed. Uh, lately, I've been really into getting back into... Uh, really getting back into the Mission Impossible movies. And realizing how uh, incredibly awesome those movies are. So that's been really cool. Uh, and then with Texas, the same thing. Like, it, or not the same thing, but it, I've had this real disgruntled kind of view of it. And I did not really like the 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 reboot, uh, the remake in, that came out in 2003. I had, I don't know, it just, I had, I did go into the movie with a preconceived notion saying that this movie, no matter what it is, has so much to live up to. Um, and there were things about it I liked, but I just had this mixed thing about it. Mainly around the idea that Texas has this thing of where it, I think it has, it functions really well with the idea of less is more. And, and I felt like the newer film just was dealing with excess. But again, flat, fast forward many years, I've seen that movie. Uh, I saw that movie again recently. Uh, I bought it. I hadn't seen it in years. And I completely fell in love with that movie. And I think that movie is amazing. And then, so I, then I also saw, and I just recently bought, the prequel, the beginning, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that movie is just incredible. So things shift. And, uh, you know, sometimes things grow. And, you know, but at, this, at the same time, I do feel like about, at least for me, about, you know, and I'd say it's about 95, 98%. Your, my gut reaction to how I react to a film or how I feel about watching a movie uh, and my opinion of, of the movie for the most part is shaped after my first viewing and it's really based on my gut reaction and usually if I'm thinking about the movie afterwards and if I'm talking about it with friends and I have this buzz and I am not fatigued you know especially if I see it in the movies I'm not fatigued I'm energized by the film to me, that ninety-eight percent of the time, that's that's saying that I have that I've had a really good experience, and I really love this film. If I don't really think about it, you know, and time goes by, and it's kind of in one ear out the other kind of a thing, then you know, then it might be a thing of where I just don't really high, hold it in high regard. It could be initially, it's it's a good thing, feels good, but. It just kind of goes by the wayside. And then you have those experiences of where, you know, you just know from the get-go that this movie is kind of awful. So today's show is on Avatar, James Cameron's epic um, film, uh, the first of many movies that have that are coming out. The Way of Water came out last year. <clears throat> it's hard to believe this came out in 2009. I've had a fairly positive experience with this movie. <coughs> And I did a big review. I did a, uh, an extensive uh, coverage of James Cameron uh, last year. I did a show where I talked just about James Cameron and him as a director. A lot of great aspects to his career and what he's done. You know, looking, looking at his career and who he was or who he is, and, and to some degree as being like a maverick and a guy who has been ahead of the time. Which I do think is true in a lot of the case, in a lot of the case, but, um, and some of the negative things that I don't really personally like about some of the aspects of his movies or kind of his, uh, you know, controlling nature, um, you know, some of the negative things, like one of the negative things that I don't really like about James Cameron, even though I think he's made some incredible movies and he's definitely like a legend in a lot of ways. You know, there was a, the, the, the last uh, Terminator movie that he uh, was involved, when, involved with. And he really kind of stole the show. He produced that movie. And he kind of stole the show and really um, kind of destroyed the film and took the, the, the breath and the creative control uh, from the actual filmmakers. He took it away. 
And he came across in this whole process as like kind of a megalomaniacal maniac and a control freak. And he ended up kind of ruining the movie. And it was, you know, kind of a, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, great articles about it. And he's in, even interviews with, um, the director, um, and that is director Tim Miller. He was famously the director of the uh, masterpiece Deadpool. Uh, really just, you know, one of the greatest movies ever. And he also directed the last uh, Terminator movie. And there, there's some really great interviews that he gave about, because that movie was a, a total flop in the box office. And he really was really honest in a few interviews about what it was like to work with James Cameron. And he kind of comes across as a little bit of a bastard. They kind of buried their hatch, their, the, buried their swords and made things, you know, better, but pretty revealing. But anyway, uh, that being said, you know, he's a, he is definitely a visionary filmmaker and he, he definitely has made some incredible movies. So today today's show is on Avatar. And so I've, you know, overall, I've, I, I have to say I, I like Avatar. I've seen it many times. Uh, I saw it, I remember seeing it in a theater when it came out. The Avatar movie was kind of a phenomenon when it came out. Of course, it was like the biggest uh, money-making movie of all time. And then The Way of Water, uh, which I also saw in the theater, which I did like, you know, had some things about it, but I did like that movie. I've only seen it once. That also set, you know, huge records. So, like, when whenever a James Cameron movie comes out, it seems to kind of shake the world, especially these, these Avatar movies. But the Avatar movie, the first one... Overall, I liked it, but I've always had some things around it where I had a lot of reservations. You know, I thought, I mean, obviously, the main thing for the, for the Avatar uh, movie and the Avatar movies, and there's going to be a bunch of other ones coming out, evidently, which I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of looking forward to, but it's... Uh, the biggest attraction or the biggest... Uh, the highest mark or the biggest attraction for these films is obviously the the special effects, the technology, and the technology that James Cameron, you know, pretty much single handedly invented for this for these films. He's known to be doing that. I mean, uh, to to have done that many times for films. You know, with the Terminator, that's one of the greatest sci fi movies ever. The technology that he created and uh, the the Abyss, another film that he really, uh, he basically created these uh, newer state-of-the-art cameras for filming underwater. Uh, some of the technology he used in in the uh, the Terminator, or I mean uh, the Titanic. I mean, so he's a, a lot of the times he has taken things to such a high level from a tech standpoint, where he literally has created, uh, has invented tools that have never existed before to to shoot his own films. So he's kind of, you know, in a different place um, than most other directors and as far as his, like, intellect. But Avatar, obviously, the, the, the main attraction is the, the world building of Pandora and the, you know, the incredible scope of technology that he created to create these, to make these films. And so, and obviously, across the board, people can agree that the visually the movie is... is you know, is is stunning and and gorgeous and pretty unbelievable, and you know the but the main thing, the main criticism I and I that I've always had with the film, um, is that the story uh, itself is in the story and the narrative of the story uh, of the whole kind of world is so um, I don't know paint by numbers is so straightforward, and it does often the comparison to basically the story uh it's basically a retelling of like the story of um pocahontas or dances with wolves but in space it, it's kind of been this almost like an ongoing joke but essentially that's what it is it's kind of a story of where you know the plight of this native american tribe or or group that is being taken over by 
white settlers. And then there's this scenario of where one of the settlers befriends the tribe and, and becomes indoctrinated into the tribe. And then he basically switches sides and becomes this like great white savior and is, and is this protector of this culture from the white, you know, devil. And so we, I mean, we've heard this story over and over again. And, you know, I do love Dances with Wolves. I, I think that's an incredible movie for what it is. But we've seen that story repeated many, many times over and over again. Another movie that does exactly the same thing is The Last Samurai. I do like that movie, but it's literally the same, uh, same exact story. And it's a little, you know, it, as a formula, it works. That scenario, that story, that setup, if you will. You know, on one hand, it does work, but it's been used too much. And it's also, you know, uh, the one thing that's, I think, kind of terrible about it is the the inaccuracy. I know it's a work of fiction, but it, it's kind of this in, this really gross inaccuracy of you know anything to do with history and this idea of like taking the white man and putting him on this pedestal as like the great white savior when at the end of the day he's you know uh, the most monstrous uh, you know creature on the earth so it always has that kind of thing and it's kind of you know it's kind of terrible when you think about it um, but that being said uh there are things around the story with Avatar that I do like. I, I like the, the the science fiction element, the way the Avatars are created. When it gets into the actual science fiction part of it on how these uh, creatures are created and how there is... Uh, how the, the Avatar is uh, interacting with the environment and other, other creatures, other people, uh, and just being alive in the environment is pretty interesting and fascinating and something that we haven't really seen before. So it has some things about the story and the narrative that are really interesting. But overall, the story is very straightforward. And that's always been the criticism of where the technology and the special effects is you know, really innovative and breathtaking and, and definitely something you've never seen before. But when it comes to the story, it's kind of straight and narrow and the criticism's always been well it would have been cool if that attention was also put on the the actual story uh more so uh, you know and it would have been even more of a thrilling experience but you know again it's really well done in a lot of ways too so and but i've seen avatar you know all that all of that being said i've seen avatar many times and i recently i was in goodwill uh, last week and again I've been going there I had not been to the Goodwill in Rockland in quite a while and I've talked about how many movies I've bought there and how great it is you know and I've most of the movies I've bought I that I have gone that I've gotten there have been I've like pretty much completed my Marvel uh, collection. You know, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I have a serious case of Marvel fatigue now, but I do. There are some movies in the in that world that I love, and I pretty much have completed my entire collection of the at least the movies that I have been wanting on Blu-ray. I've gotten them through Goodwill. So they had this there when I went there last week. Uh, I went there on Sunday. They had Avatar on Blu-ray. I've never seen it on Blu-ray, which is really crazy. I have... <laughs> I have saw it in a the theater once. Uh, I saw it when it came out. And then I have seen it... Uh, I've seen it on television. I have seen it uh, on DVD a few times. I actually got... I have a copy. I own Avatar on DVD, which is a pretty good collection. Um, it comes packed with all kinds of special features. And I've watched that a few times, but I, I realized I'd never seen it on Blu-ray. And I'm like, well, of all movies, visually, you should see this on Blu-ray. But they had this for sale, and it was super cheap. It was like five bucks. And the other thing that was really cool about this that I was really intrigued by was that this is also 
it's a Blu-ray, but it's also, you have the option to watch it in 2D or 3D. And I was like, wow, cool, all right. And it was super cheap, and I've never seen it on Blu-ray, so I snagged it up. The other thing, the one thing that really kind of is a super disappointment is that there are zero special features on here. There's a commentary track, I believe, but that's it. So that's very, very surprising. Because the DVD version of this movie has a, a, a shit ton of... Uh, hours of special features so it's really surprising um and again i never seen this in uh on blu-ray before let alone 3d and my 3d i i can't watch anything in 3d because you have to have a specific player to watch it in 3d 3d i like 3d and then sometimes i don't sometimes i think it's a little bit uh distracting when you watch a movie in 3d sometimes it can be really cool but uh you can i you you are able to watch it on in 2D. So I watched it in 2D, and and uh, I have to say this was like a whole new experience watching this on Blu-ray and and also in 2D. Um, it was uh, it was wonderful. I you know I the things the issues that I had around the film I felt them kind of falling more by the wayside after watching it on on in this format. Uh, I think that watching it in this format, Blu-ray 2D, especially 2D, is uh, was even more, uh, way more immersive of an, of an experience. And I got lost in the film. I legitimately got lost. And, you know, the first half of the movie, it's a long movie, obviously. It's almost three hours. They're all very long, but... The first half of the movie, I, I look at it. I look at the movie. I look at Avatar as kind of being uh, divided into like two chapters in a lot of ways. The first chapter being like mostly like more or less a love story, and then the second chapter being more of a war movie. And when it got to that second chapter, especially in uh, watching it in this format, I was like, "Wow! Like this is this is intense. This is this is a." an experience like a real experience and i found you know to be honest i found myself as i was watching it and just getting more and more thrown in and pulled into this movie um i found myself kind of letting go of any of the reservations and things problems that i have with the film because i and at the end of it i was just like this is a really good movie and i think it's the kind of the case of i mean obviously watching it in this format which is the way to see it um, changed it so but it's also a case that you know movies will some some movies will really grow on you over time sometimes they will not age well sometimes they will age well and I think that this is the case of a movie that uh, I think has aged well and I was I was really into it and I have to say I have a much different opinion of it obviously those things are still there the negative feelings that I have or or I should say some of the reservations or issues are still there. Um, but overall, I, like I said, I found myself just kind of forgetting about that stuff and just getting, you know, g getting lost in the film in a good way. And it was a great experience. And the, uh, the uh, CGI, the effects, the, the use of practical effects, all of the, all of the technology used in this movie is uh is unlike anything i've ever seen before it's truly amazing um yeah so visually it's seamless too it's like the technology is so seamless and the detail watching it in 2d is is kind of staggering so i highly recommend people seeing it uh in 2d i to see this movie i i also think when i think of like imax the imax experience that would be just like insane to see this in imax but very cool. I, I uh, definitely enjoyed this movie. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I had the experience that I had because it, it was a whole a whole different thing. And it was kind of like seeing it for the first time. So I definitely recommend it. And my appreciation for, the, for Avatar has definitely uh, grown significantly. So thanks again. And we will see you next time. Peace.